Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. And we have got Caroline Lunny, alumni from The Bachelor, criticized for her opinion on the Ukraine situation. And we're going to get into it right now. It's fascinating. It's interesting stuff. We always like to pull in social topics as they exist around The Bachelor world. Do me a favor. If you want more content, every afternoon I've got Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast, right down there. So just click Bachelor Rush Hour, link in the comment section, and you can listen to the free daily afternoon podcast, which takes all the different information and squishes it down into 25 minutes. Follow me on Instagram, Matt D. Niels. I'll be in Santa Barbara tonight with a stand-up comedy show. So that's where I'll be. If you want to come, I'll be um, I'll be at the, um, it's called Validation Ale. Yeah, I think it's at Validation Ale. All right, let's get into this story. So Caroline posted this yesterday. And if you don't know Caroline, we got our Wikipedia here. She was uh, eliminated in week four of the 22nd season, fifth season of Bachelor in Paradise. And she's got a very large following. She's a realtor. So here's her repost. I'll share what she said. But uh, someone had posted number of miles from Washington, D.C. to Ukraine, 5,000. 5, <laughs> number of miles from Washington to East Palestine, Ohio, 290. So there's a, a catastrophic environmental disaster happening in northeastern Ohio right now. Uh, we're going to talk about that. There's also a humanitarian crisis with the war that's going on in Ukraine as Russia has invaded Ukraine one year ago. We are sending them boatloads of ammunition and weaponry and things like that to fight that war. We have not sent them any military. Okay, important to know that. We have audience that leans left. We have audience that leans right. I have to navigate all of you so we don't get triggered and can have this conversation. I've got the kid gloves on. Are we all ready? I'm not pandering to either side. Calm the F down and just listen up. So Caroline says, just a reminder that the guy you voted for is giving your tax dollars to Ukraine while Americans suffer arguably one of the most horrific environmental disasters we've ever seen. Wondering where all my favorite loud leftists are now. You guys have been awfully quiet lately. She also says, my heart breaks for Ukraine. It does. But I continue to be grossly disappointed by our president's priorities and inability to put up us first. His continued lack of action should infuriate us. Our government is a disaster. Now, we're going to cover this. It's a false dichotomy. Why is he over there when we need help over here? There are so many areas that we need help with. We walk and chew gum at the same time. So many different things are going on right this second. We could say this about any situation. Why is Biden voting on a bill in Washington when we need to clean the homelessness problem in LA? I get it. There are multiple issues happening and the one in Ohio needs not be forgotten about. Let's hear Caroline's response after posting that because when you post anything political, you're going to get haters in all directions. So let's at least give the benefit to hear out what she has to say. My post from yesterday that I reshared for my friend, I understand that that is above my pay grade. I'm not a politician. I don't claim to be. Um, and I want to clarify a couple things. <clears throat> Just to remind everyone, I voted for Biden. Do I regret it a little bit? Maybe. Um, it's complicated. Um, but I did vote for Biden. So that just so everyone knows, calm down. Um, and second of all, like, I believe what's happening in Ukraine is incredibly important. I don't, I'm not saying like, F Ukraine, like, I see the big picture. I think what's happening to those people is awful. I think it's terrible. I understand the Ukraine trip has probably been in the works for a while now. That's not what I'm saying. I think Ukraine is very, very important. What I'm also saying is that I think we're not making Ohio as big of a deal as we should be. And I think it's then really we, important. And we shouldn't have compared Ukraine to Ohio. They are separate in both important issues and it affects us in so many more ways than we even are beginning to realize and it's it's catastrophic and no one's making a big deal about it That's and, and and to a point she's not wrong there are a lot of people there's a lot of media like it should be the lead story in all of our domestic media it should be the lead story what the hell went down in ohio also there are so many things that led up to this disaster there will be more disasters like it if we don't have the right protections and the right standards set for our crippling infrastructure this is a social pro okay let, let, let me start here infrastructure is a social program we say we don't like socialism okay but you understand we have bridges that are crumbling our our country is actually like not in a good place for the last 50 years with regards to roads bridges i mean if you travel to other first world countries we have the ability to dump a lot of money 
into our infrastructure, into our railways, into a lot of the different aspects of our country and create American jobs to do that. And we're starting to in certain ways. Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden worked on getting a bridge in that connects Kentucky to Ohio. I know a lot about this. My wife is from that area and they've seen this bridge be crippling her entire life. So there is working across the aisle to get things done, but there's also the privatization of certain transportation companies that cut corners, and there's a lot of mischievous things happening, and that's important to talk about. But the idea that Ukraine has to be compared to Ohio is rubbish. I'm saying. It's funny because, yes, people were upset with me yesterday, but more people were actually um, thanking me for sharing that post, which I wasn't expecting. I knew that there was going to be backlash. Um, because where our country is super, super divided. Well, the backlash is not that we're divided. It that It's that we're not operating to our higher level of intelligence. The conversation can't be, why is he in Ukraine when he should be in Ohio? The conversation has to be like, let's stop being divided and, and get our our leaders in Congress and all these other places to put the money where it needs to go and not line the pockets of the right people or, you know, lobbyists uh, getting their way. No, this is a class system issue. This is the middle class getting shat on once again. Because I tell you what, the people in Ohio that live in a large radius of this incident are going to be left footing the bill. I'm confused. You're confused. We're all confused. But I think at the end of the day, we have to just remember... Um we have to take care of ourselves because no one's coming to save us. There's no one who's going to come and like fix our problems. It's us. Like we, it's that, I mean, yes, but we, that's absolutely what government is for the pooling of resources to fix our problems. We have to fix our own problems. And so all I'm saying is like, if we have a huge problem, like what's happening in Ohio that affects our food, our water, just all the things again, above my pay grade, but I know that this is huge. It's very important. It's very big. Um, I just think we should be taking it a little bit more seriously. And I think we, it's like time is of the essence. That's all I'm saying. So right, and of course, I agree. There are, there, the, um, this idea the Ohio governor drinks tap water near train derailment is just batshit crazy. They did the same thing outside Detroit. Uh, where they were like, no, we drank the water. It's perfectly fine. I'm going to play a clip. They all got together and had a sip of this drinking water. It's like, listen, dummy, having a sip of the drinking water isn't the same as being exposed to chemicals over years. We saw the same issue happen when people didn't want to fight for the um, uh, uh, burn uh, burn pit victims and victims of 9-11 who, have, who had cancer and, um, and have to deal with long-term health issues. Absolutely. So this is them doing a PR stunt in Palestine, in East Palestine, in East Palestine, um, Ohio. Here, complete. Just we will. You, you can serve us up a glass of water. Glasses right there. So this is them all drinking the water. Look at them go. This one guy right here is like, oh boy. Continue to. Yeah. The physical. Clean up. I just, so yeah. dangerous stuff here. Um, the, uh, the, the the very dangerous. Here are some of your comments. Shows how, and this is directed to Caroline. Which again, I'm not here to. I don't think Caroline's dumb. I just think it's an ignorant, ignorant thing to post, and that's why she's getting backlash. Shows how dumb she is, and how quickly folks like her buy into disinformation and snapshots of false right wing propaganda and spread it. I'm not a fighting ban because I'm a sane individual who doesn't fan presidents. But there's literal video of the governor of Ohio saying Biden called him and told him he will do anything to help and the ohio governor told him no also aren't republicans all about states rights this is on the government governor and he needs to fix that plus they voted trump who rolled back all those protections so clearly this person has a strong opinion republicans and right-wing propagandists like caroline out here doing the most to show how little they give a flip about others keep voting for the right wingers though to be governors of these states and blame dems for what republicans do it's the old right wing playbook i mean there's plenty of states honestly like uh, arkansas that are last you know states that are just like 
like on the bottom of t of you know of um, education on the bottom of uh how you know uh, wealth that's that's being brought in and you just go like how are people not more upset with the structure that runs everything um in their in their localized economy what blows my mind about these right-wing talking points is that they always place blame on the president not to say biden and other presidents can't be blamed in other situations but the senate voted to send money to ukraine it's not just like biden said i'm going to send a ton of money to ukraine it was voted on from both parties i hate right-wing talking points they show how dumb they really are helping ukraine fight russia is what we need okay gotta get the music queued up hold on here we gotta get the national anthem queued up here if we're gonna be talking about this helping ukraine fight russia is what we need would people rather have russia win and then decide to take over other countries do people realize how awful putin is yes we absolutely need to help ohio and other places that have these dangerous ecological problems but biden isn't the sole source for this glad to see epa demand norfolk pay for their crimes in ohio Notice how she didn't mention Trump's transportation department rolling back railroad safety measures. Crickets on that. Political illiteracy and the fact that one in 10 Americans don't care about politics is a huge problem in this country. I don't care about politics equals I have crazy beliefs, but I'm not smart enough to defend them when scrutinized. And kind of in a way, she was like, this is above my pay grade. If it's above your pay grade, you got to be more careful to share things that are falsely sort of like uh, linked, which like which is Ukraine and Ohio. This is ridiculous. Can people in Ohio use anti-tank missiles for environmental re re remediation for flip's sake i hate this misconception and i wish the administration did a better job explaining this but we're not writing a blank check we're sending ukraine equipment and munitions out of storage and estimating their dollar value as the amount of aid we're decimating russian forces without losing a single american life and creating jobs for the folks working to replenish those weapon stockpiles yeah there's a lot of people actually that have said you know what for all the ways you can criticize the presidency and you should uh you should criticize all your leaders leaders in if you feel like they're taking money from the wrong places and this and that um but they've been able to fight a war where russia has invaded ukraine and they thought they were going to roll in in a weekend and ukraine is a ragtag group of mfers who don't take nothing from nobody and they're fighting for their lives in the U.S. and other countries have provided them with certain missiles and munitions and tanks. And we in, in the United Nations have yet to set foot uh, in, in Ukraine because that would pretty much... Like if Ukraine set foot in a United Nations country, which is Poland, which is very close, very close to Ukraine, then we'd be in World War III. That's where we would be. That's how close and critical the thin ice is with this situation. But you can't just let Russia just walk into Ukraine, a sovereign nation. Now, likewise, if you're Russia, you're saying, well, the UN has pushed all the way up to our doorsteps and this and that. But that is not an excuse for the invasion and taking of lives in the way that they have done. I'm more surprised than anybody that the war has was not ended as quickly as Russia just invading completely. Ukraine's put up a hell of a fight and they've had the help from the world for the most part. All right, so they drank the tap water. We got that. Here's what people are sharing on TikTok when you talk about what's going on. This is East Palestine, Ohio, and she throws a rock in the water, and look at all the oil wow. slick coming up. The EPA is lying to the people it. of East Palestine. It's all in the There's pin people that have said their, their pets have gone and died. Someone's putting milk into their coffee, and it sparkles. These are all just viral videos. See that? People go, I don't know what this is. Um, Even though the media is refusing to cover it, there's a massive environmental disaster currently unfolding in Ohio. A train that was carrying extremely toxic chemicals derailed over in the city of East Palestine. And in order to avoid an uncontrolled explosion, the Ohio government decided to set these toxic chemicals on fire preemptively. But while this might have averted a massive explosion with shrapnel flying everywhere, it did not avoid the release of toxic gases into the air for several days on end. Gases which included vinyl chloride, hydrogen chloride, as well as phosgene, which is so toxic it was used as a chemical weapon in World War I. So we're supposed to, and again, if you wonder why this is close to home, it's for a lot of reasons. My father died in part because of exposure to Agent Orange in Vietnam. It's on his death certificate. Uh, Agent Orange was an exfoliant, uh, or a, excuse me, a defoliant that was used to kind of just get rid of forests so they could see the enemy. And it was created in part by Monsanto, and it has devastated many people's lives. The, the toxins that are released in Ohio, if this was a foreign entity doing it, we'd be at war with them right now.
And yet it happened, maybe in part by an accident, but by an accident probably caused by greed, by maximizing profits. And this is the, this is the, the reason capitalism needs to be regulated. This is the reason the people that need to pay the price here need to be the companies that cause this devastating uh, uh, disaster that we're seeing right now. And yet, it just seems easier to blame the president because he's in a different uh, cleanup situation in a war that's being fought in Eastern Europe when we know for a fact that, well, I don't know, I don't know how to say we know for a fact, but we need to hold our politicians accountable to act quickly to do whatever they can to mitigate this disaster. Um, this has been devastating to this community, and I, I want to make sure you understand I am terribly so sorry. We have the East Palestine After criticism governor. from residents and lawmakers, the CEO of Norfolk Southern, Alan Shaw, oh, the CEO. visited East Palestine over the weekend. Norfolk Southern is fully committed to doing what's right for this community. The and, company and has promised of course to pay for the we can't believe that. Says, of course we have to make sure that that happens. With the National Transportation Safety Board's investigation. We support the NTSB's investigation. All right, so obviously we, the investigation that needs to happen, I don't know why my thing's still playing. The investigation that needs to happen needs to hold everybody accountable and also continue for years to come to make sure that the situation is handled. Now, a lot of people accuse you of being one-sided. This is all from Fox News here. Of course. You know, but they give all kinds of money for hurricanes and floods. Why isn't there federal right. money now for these people to move? Well, there should be, but the Governor DeWine has to ask FEMA to come in, and he hasn't done it yet. I, maybe he thinks it's not necessary, but... I don't think you should be thinking that unless he's a scientist. What? Uh, so we have infighting here on the panel. Why aren't we sending federal money in? And they're saying the governor of Ohio hasn't asked for that money. And part of that is because he doesn't think they, uh, maybe the EPA hasn't said that the, that it's uh, uh, bad enough over there. Either way, it's a ridiculous situation. There's red tape apparently, but you can always use an excuse why you don't want the money or you want, you don't want this or that, but you need competence in situations like this and disasters like this. I'd love to know what people think. But this is why you're 18 minutes into a video and you just can't post a random meme. You just can't post this and expect to have it all right. What is this photo even? You know what I mean? So as far as, you know, I just say with Caroline Lunny, you, by all means, post whatever you want on your social media, but just realize if there's pushback, it's because either you got it wrong or you're just not using your platform to share the full truth of the story. Either way, we'll continue to talk about Ohio. We'll continue to talk about Ukraine and other ways it fits into our bachelor community. But for a second, please, in the comment section, can we be less divisive with uh, infighting? And can we be more on the same page that the government doesn't have our best interests in all different ways? And that we need to elect people that say what they mean and mean what they say and aren't taking money from uh, big donors. And this, the class issue is what we need more education on because that's what the big problem is. If this happened in a major city um, of major influence, I think there'd be more media talking about it. Sadly, in a rural or suburban area in the Midwest, I think people are slow to discuss it and point fingers, but it's a devastating issue and one that we could have completely prevented. What will the next devastating environmental issue be in our country? Will there be bridges that collapse? Will there be buildings that could have been retrofitted for earthquakes that weren't? What is it going to be? Are we going to be the first world country we aspire to be, where we are um, uh, leading in science and leading in medicine, leading in all these things, or are we just going to be fighting with each other and get nothing accomplished? Uh, it's up to us. It's up to how we vote. All right, folks, more content coming your way after this.